So we're gonna talk about vertebrae, and you can see the vertebrae come in all sizes, shapes, etc. And we're gonna go for each one, uh, the different levels uh, individually, cervical, thoracic, lumbar, and sacral. But for our purposes, uh, this is just gonna kind of go over and over you. So I'm just grabbing a random vertebrae, um, and we're just gonna sort of talk about um, the uh, general characteristics of a vertebrae. So the first part is the vertebral body. Uh, it'll change based on region. Cervical, thoracic, and lumbar uh, have different types of bodies. That's the vertebral body where your intervertebral disc will uh, lay on top and there'll actually be one on the bottom. Also, a uh, reminder to review how the rib articulates in with the vertebral body. So you will see there's a little articulation right there for a rib, um, but that'd be the vertebral body. Then from the vertebral body, now vertebral body is going to be anterior. So everything here is posterior. So everything posterior to the vertebral body is considered the vertebral arch. So starting here and wrapping around, that is your arch. See if I can get that angle better for you. So from this body wrapping around, that's the arch. Okay? That is vertebral arch. If you combine the vertebral arch, which is basically the posterior portion of the vertebrae, and you combine that to the vertebral body, which is the anterior portion, you get the vertebral foramen, which is where your spinal cord runs. So the vertebral foramen is basically made up of the vertebral arch being the posterior, vertebral body being the anterior. Now, we have little landmarks as we come through. Um, there is a little bone sort of a bridge right here that connects that vertebral body uh, to the transverse process, which is this lateral offshoot. That little bridge right there is the pedicle. So I'll come up here. So that little guy right there, can you see it? There you go. That's the pedicle. It's going to then go out to the transverse process, which we can palpate, okay? Then there is a piece of bone, and again, sort of another bridge connecting the transverse process to the spinous process, which is the most posterior aspect. That's where it's most easily palpable. So it's the spinous process, and you have this little bridge right here. That's the lamina, and these are paired. So you have a right and a left lamina, a right and a left pedicle, and then a right and a left transverse process. You only have one spinous process back here. Okay, so again, review. Body, pedicle, transverse process, lamina, spinous process. Okay? Now there are some rough areas uh, for articulations, and so I'm gonna spin this around so now the posterior side is facing you. And you're gonna notice that these little areas right here and right here, okay? These are your zygopophyseal, or your Z joints. And this allows the vertebrae to articulate with each other. So if I have a vertebrae like this, and they, they're not gonna line up perfectly because I'm just grabbing random vertebrae, but these two are the superior articulating facets, or the zygo, zygopophyseal, so the articulating facets right here and here. These are superior for this vertebrae. They are gonna articulate with the inferior articulating facets of this vertebrae, like, that's a bad example because this doesn't fit at all. Let me find another random, hopefully this will fit. Ah, I'll switch it, there we go. Ah, that's better. So you can see, there we go. That's an, in, these are two inferior articulating facets right here and here, and they are articulating with the superior facets of the vertebrae underneath it. So again, if I come over here, you can see that very clearly. So as you move in the trunk flexion, trunk extension, those facets located right here are going to open and close. Now I'm exaggerating, but you can appreciate the motion. Okay, so I'm gonna remove this superior superior vertebrae. There's the joints right there. Those are the areas. So these would be the superior articulating facets, the superior zygopophyseals. And then just below it would be the inferiors there and there. 
Okay, so there's our orientation. And I'm gonna bring back my superior vertebrae and it should fit, yoink, and it slides right in and they articulate, okay? What's then formed is a little hole located right there. I'm gonna spin over so you can see it. There's the hole. That is the inter in between vertebral foramen. So the foramen or the hole that's formed by two vertebrae coming together is the inter vertebral foramen, okay? Because it's in between two vertebrae. And this is where your nerve roots exit out. So if you kind of look at it like that, okay? So again, the vertebral foramen is a hole within one vertebrae, right there. The intervertebral foramen is the hole that's basically created by two adjacent vertebrae. You have your articulating facets or your zygopophyseals, which allows one vertebrae to articulate with another vertebrae. There should be a disc. This doesn't show up, but there should be a disc in between them. And again, let's appreciate the uh, vertebral, uh, the rib articulations with the vertebrae. All right, so if we now go, we're going to take our camera. We're going to go look at an actual vertebrae model. You can see all of the vertebrae, how they are articulated, right? How they're stacked on one another. As we come to the lateral side, we rotate around. You can see the articulating facets as they all articulate with each other. Um, we can appreciate that. And as we get to regional differences, we'll go through all the regional differences. You can see the intervertebral discs in between each of the bodies. I'm gonna come out to the other side. You can see how the nerve root is exiting out of that intervertebral foramen. Um, this model doesn't have it, but we can appreciate where your ribs would be articulating there and there, and obviously articulating on the transverse processes. So that's the spine, the vertebrae, general characteristics, and we'll talk about each region in another video.